Well, start this episode off with a little bit of hunting, everybody. I didn't bring the necessary tool to shoot that thing, but those that's a forest grouse, and they're absolutely delicious little morsels of meat. We have one of the best adventures we've been on in a very long time. You saw it in the thumbnail. It's gonna be a cool day. It's time to start getting stuff done, though. Let's go do it. Well, that's home for the night. Way down there. But it is incredibly beautiful. It's a super hot day. It's gonna be a long walk down there, obviously, but this is gonna be a really cool trip. This is something I've always, always wanted to do. And then this place in particular. And what a setting. It's so quiet. I have no clue where this trail is. It's kind of undefined. It's not very, not very popular, I would say. Um, and so we have to try to find where to go down. I've never been here before, so the hunt is on. Holy S-H-I-T, we made it. Freaking running all over the mountain, ran into an addicted fan and he gave us a tip on where to go. Seems like there's multiple ways to get down to this lake and some of them aren't actually a trail. Good thing we found somebody to tell us where to go. But it's five o'clock now, 4.30. Um, it's four miles down to this lake, so it's gonna be a time crunch. We're not getting our raft built today. Oops, I gave it away. We're not getting our raft built today, so we're gonna get down there, get a good camp set up, get comfortable, eat some food, have a beautiful night on the lake, and uh, I have one surprise in store for this evening, you guys, and I am extremely excited, because the guy I talked to uh, reassured that what I was thinking we were gonna do tonight and what we we're gonna hear is actually happening. So let's get packed up, let's get loaded, let's get going. Super cool old, oh, super cool, yeah. It's not even hooked on there. Great way to start. Well, we're locked and loaded. Ready? For a long hike. So, very stoic start to the hike. There's a forest fire about four miles, basically just the other side of that canyon right there that's burning right now. And it's creating this really, really kind of doomy, gloomy, shadowy haze. So it's gonna be a cool sunset tonight. I can already tell that. But we got a long ways to go. I'm only about a quarter mile in. We got four miles to go, 3.9 to be exact. And I can't wait to be there because this was Frustrating afternoon. Finished the video from yesterday, or from last week that you guys just saw yesterday. Packed up, got up here, a bazillion stops in between, but we made it. And I think we're gonna make it before dark, so. Nonetheless, I got my headlamp, got my little dog for protection. And there's fish down there, we gotta find them. Hey, yes. I'm doing this hike, four miles, and my chacos, obviously somebody else did it in Crocs. They didn't make it with them, but whatever. But shout out to Chaco. You see us out here doing the most BA stuff in your shoes. I like my chacos, especially my rainbow trouts. I always wear my rainbow trouts on my way to catch the rainbow trouts. Woo, it's hot. It's almost October, you guys. Almost October. We're dying out here, man. Tiny black dog. Tough world out here for us little boys. Hi, little boys. Yeah, love you. Well, I must say, that's a pretty cool view. The lake is down there somewhere. 
looks like the end of the lake is right here so i'm thinking that's our trail still right here probably switches back back and forth back and forth back and forth all the way down there but what a freaking spot <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is effing cool pardon my english i've never seen anything quite like this unbelievable I made one cow call and it screamed off, so let's listen again. Okay, I'm gonna reveal my secret tool. That's this one's really pissed, everybody. This one's really pissed. Now, it is hunting season, so I'm not gonna go crazy on these things because there is people who got lucky and got tags for this area. So I'm not gonna mess with them too bad, but it is really cool to be hearing this stuff. Heard one way down there. There's one over here. There's one at the bottom of the hill. There's one right here. And they're all pissed off. We're trying to get um, some close-ups with my binoculars through the camera so you can actually see how big these bulls are. But these things are mating this time of year, so it's a bugle that you're hearing. For those of you that don't know what we're doing right now, we're making the sound of a female elk and getting these things all riled up. And they're not going to come over here and they're not going to come towards us because they do have all their cows with them. But it's just a beautiful sound. I'm glad to share it with you. We're one more episode away from our first elk hunt ever together, so it's going to be fun. Okay, enough messing around. We're going to run out of daylight. There's the sun over there. We got about here's a little Daniel Boone trip for you guys. So the horizon is right about here. Each finger usually represents 15 minutes. So we got about an hour, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes before it's going to be completely set behind the mountains, and it's going to get dark really fast. So we need to get down there. We still don't know what the structure situation is. I've heard rumors that people leave a lot of stuff down here, some stuff we can reuse, and uh, make ourselves a nice little hut for the night. But Nevertheless, we have to get down there first, so I'm gonna try to stop messing with these elk so much. Just kidding. I'm not gonna, I can't help myself. But we need to get to camp, because we don't have camp. We don't even know where camp's at. And I'm kinda getting hungry. This looks like kind of a makeshift campsite. Not sure really. You can see the lake just right here. Pretty short little walk down, but it looks like the trail goes right to the lake. So we'll go check out that spot, see if there's any sort of structures to work with. Maybe get a little fishing in tonight. There's fish rolling all over out there. I cannot wait to get a line in there. <laughs> Would you look at this? Looks like some people left us a few things. We got a killer structure built. Pots, pans. I'm sure those tents are in good shape. Fishing poles even. We got everything we need. Wow. We made it everybody. Okay, here's what we got everybody. Found this tent in the giant pile of camping gear. Got people left down here. It's a little bit messy. 
I'm gonna try to pack some of this stuff out with me in the morning uh, and clean this place up a little bit, leave it a little bit nicer than I found it. But the nice part about this situation is there's quite a bit of stuff to use. There's this one little, little tent here. Obviously, I have my trusty cameraman with me as well. So we need a spot for both of us. And that's a pretty little tent and we're pretty big dudes. So me and little, we're getting the tent. We've got an extra sleeping bag here. That might be little's bed. Stephanie's don't touch, get your own. All right, Stephanie, well, if you're watching this, we didn't get our own, I'm gonna use this. Okay, there's a pretty neat little structure going here. This will block the, the rain, the dew, the wind, basically everything that might make us uncomfortable. Okay, might be Jimmy rigged, but it's rigged everyone. We got us a camp. Well, it's a little hard to see in the dark, but it'll work. It'll, it's home for the night. It's a beautiful temperature out here. Obviously I have my shirt off because we're still, we're maybe not super warm, but nevertheless, it's a beautiful camp. I love it. go. Dinners are cooking. Not quite as gourmet as normal, but my favorite thing in the world for camping on trips like this is about four, four and a half miles in here. It was a long walk. It's going to be a pain in the ass getting out of here, but I don't even want to think about that yet. I might stay forever. But uh, the mountain house, my very favorite one is the rice and chicken because honestly, I think it comes with almost like twice the amount of food um, as some of the other ones. So we got a couple rice and chickens for this trip. Pull out your little package here. Put that in your bag because we don't litter around here. And then one and a quarter cups of water. One and a third, excuse me. Get our water boiling. Get our dinner made. Mmm, look at all that salt. Yeah. Oh, I love these mountain houses. Okay. Now we wait. There it is. Oh, yeah. Happy camper here. Look how delicious that looks. Pretty delicious, I guess. Depends on who you're asking. Mmm. Does the body good. Oh, I can still hear the elk bugling. Got camp set up. Got a belly full of food. Time to get some shut eye. I can't wait for the morning though. There's a ton of fish rolling right at camp, so should be a good day. Let's crawl in bed. Well, good morning, everybody. Look at our special spot. Pretty frickin' cool, if you ask me. Elk bugling all through the night. Slept pretty dang good in our little hut, actually, our little bum camp. Um, but we have other things on our mind for today other than sleep. I'm gonna put a little breakfast in our belly, wait for the sun to start reaching down towards the water because for my project that I'm gonna do today, the way we're gonna get out there and catch fish is with everything that's floating around us here. So I'm gonna have to get in the water to make my raft. So I'm gonna wait for it to get a little warmer outside, fish a little bit in the meantime, and watch the sunrise. Enjoy. Okay, sun's out, gun's out. It's time to build our fishing craft because there's fish rolling all over this lake and I need to get a line in. We've been casting from the bank, hooked a couple, but I think there's gonna be some big ones in there further out that we're gonna really wanna get. So let's grab our tools, find our logs, and tie it all together and make ourselves a raft. Let's do it. Okay, everybody, first order of business here is gonna be finding the logs. I'm gonna put my chest cam on for this because I think this is gonna be a fun operation. I kind of want to make something that has like a hydrodynamic point to it where it kind of comes to a point like a normal boat so that I'm not plowing so much water when I'm trying to paddle because I'm gonna to have to make my paddle also. So I'm gonna to want to make sure it's the easiest and most hydrodynamic. So 
I have some really good logs here already. I'm thinking I'm trying to use less than five, but it's gonna really depend on what will float my big butt. So let's get in here and find the right logs. Let's do this. Okay. But I'm thinking, for my design, there's probably two big ones like this on each end so that it's really balanced, and then smaller ones, in the, or more round ones in the middle that have a lot of flotation. So I need my like pontoons to balance, and then I need my big logs to float me. Oh, this one obviously looks perfect. Let's see how much weight this holds. I mean, quite a bit. Three of those are floating for sure. Okay. I think we might as well start with these two. It's a pretty good little pair. Not that I'm having. Like an early morning Sudoku puzzle. And I was not willing to play. Yeah. I'm just gonna do a cinch knot on a lot of these. Three or four wraps. Back for the hole I made. It's almost like a fisherman's knot. And that pulls tight like that. And I can suck these things down. Nice and tight. And then basically my goal is to not have to cut the paracord that way. I don't have to leave any garbage. There's no garbage left, there's no waste. Nothing of the sorts. Okay, arch number one. Let's see. Kind of enough, they recover. I think if I do one good one in the middle, maybe two on the other side, we might be in good shape. I think it'll take five logs to float me, we'll see. I'm a five log kind of guy. Okay, did you hear Jordan waste five logs? Oh, this bad boy is floating for sure. Yeah, this is kind of a shorty, but it helps our aerodynamic, or excuse me, hydro. I can't get that one right today. It exceeds our hydrodynamic wishes. Better go the other way. Not really the best fit, but a great float. Story of my life. But I think four logs is gonna do it. Jordan's not a five log guy. Okay, we are looking real good, people. Real good. I have a lot of confidence this one's gonna float me. Before I actually tie it off, I guess though, I think I'm going to um, just make sure that it does float me. And then we're on to the final project of making ourselves a form of propulsion. Yeah. We're off the bank, guys. Let's see how it works. My pontoon effect is definitely working. I think I'm going to be okay. The worst case scenario, if all else does fail and this falls apart, we can pretty easily just dive in the water. It's warm water. Pretty, it's pretty nice out here. I can dive in the water, wrap this thing around a couple more times. Okay, just figuring it out here. But I think we're gonna be okay. Oh, 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 we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, she's looking good. Buoyancy test. Oh, three logs is perfect. Brings a whole new meaning to stand up paddle board. Stand up paddle log. I gotta make my paddle now and then we're fishing. It is so beautiful out here. We need to get in the water.
pretty wide and I'll actually probably be able to make it a little bit wider with the sticks that I use. Just do a quick little repair here to make sure this doesn't split. Okay, it just might work. And I got all these little cross beams that I'm going to use here. Luckily this alder is really nice to work with so I'm just going to do this. So I decided I'm going to be smarter. This is all learning curve. Never made one of these before. But I think we got a pretty good design going. Anyways, I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to start with the smaller pieces on the bottom. And as that stick gets bigger, I'm going to use the bigger pieces. Okay, here's two rungs. I guess we can call them rungs. I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna need a little more paracord though. I think I brought some more. There it is. My paddle. Paddle faster, I hear banjo music. My primitive paddle. That's gonna work good. Let's get our fishing rods, let's get out there. I'm embarking on a journey across volcanic lakes. Yeah. I think maybe the way to go on the move, it might be something like this. A little spread eagle action. It's working! It's working! Paddle's holding up. Everything's going good. What do you think, everybody? What do you think of my adventure mobile? What should we call it? We'll call it the SS Log Jamming. Wow, what a truly incredible place. There's fish jumping all over. I can't really tell. I think that is the outlet of the lake. Obviously, that's the headwater of the lake. And this time of year in the fall, you start to see fish move around and either start going to or towards a spawn, because uh, they'll spawn in the, in the fall and in the spring. Um, and then you'll start to see these fish just kind of just hunting and trying to fatten up for winter. And that's kind of why I'm trying to get over to this big log jammy area, because I know there's a lot of aquatic. When I flip these logs over, there's bugs all over them. So. I know that these things can just swim around and probably nibble bugs right off the wood, so maybe they'll think I'm a big meal. Somebody might. Okay, I'm gonna try a troll technique. Try to get over here. I want to try to find some fresh water, some inlets here. Try to find me a fish that wants to buy it. They're jumping all around. I might switch to the spinner here in just a second just to cover a little more water quicker. Be a little more efficient, if you will. But I'm really impressed by how everything's working out right now. The boat's working good. No knots coming undone. Feeling good about it. Feeling good. Come on, fish. Don't make me switch to a spinner. Again, you guys already know my favorite, my preferred method is to catch fish, especially trout species on a fly, so I'm gonna stick with it until it's obvious I shouldn't anymore. We hooked some fish on spinners last night, but it was a little too dark to film, so we didn't really film it. Um, 
But I wanted to, I didn't want to take the easy way out. This, this episode is not about taking the easy way out. So here we are, fly fishing on logs. Okay, switching ammunition. Enough messing around. We're going with the rooster tails. I think they might be a little deeper. There's not quite as many jumping as I've been seeing all morning. So they might have went subsurface, might be feeding on something down deeper in the water column. So let's get something down there closer to them. Well, there's one following it. It's a really big one. Very first cast had a follow. He's right there still too. There go. Oh, I got him, got him. Oh God, he nailed it. That was so cool. Oh God, he just destroyed it. Oh yes, yeah baby, yeah baby. First cast, second cast really. But he followed it straight from the wood. They just want something a little shinier. Oh, it's gone everyone. It's okay, first cast, first fish. Didn't get a really good look at it. I want you guys to see those things because they are very beautiful. Dang it. Okay, now that I know this is working, we're gonna go, gonna go to the troll technique again. The wind's starting to blow me pretty good. Oh, one just rolled right where I cast it. That's a good sign. Oh, I got him! Oh my, I shouldn't have set the hook. He's still coming for it. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's gonna get this one. He yanked it right out of his mouth. Son of a gun. Fish number two. That scared me. I looked down there all of a sudden I saw him Saw the back of his throat coming at my spinner, and I totally Yankee pooed it. I did the ultimate sin. I yanked it right out of his darn mouth. Yes, that's a really nice one too, everyone. That's a really nice one. Shiny and clean, yeah. Come on, over. Dang it, lost him on the way to the camera again. Oh, I got my pal with me now. Maybe this will be good luck. I got the wind at my back now. Casting a quarter mile. Okay, caught fish. We've caught fish. We've accomplished the goal, you guys. But I'm not trying to keep these fish. So I'm trying to keep them in the water and then bring the good camera over to get a, to get a look at them. But luck is not on our side right now. This side of the lake is definitely fishy. I see a lot of really cool structure down there. Giant old growth trees that are just stuck in the ground from the mud flow. And lots of places for these little, these little creatures to live. Got a follower right here. Two of them, three of them. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it, he's right here. Come on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh man, they're all over right here. Need to get a little deeper, I think. We're in the spot now, we're in the zone. The SS log jam and got us to the hole. And now we're in a log jam. The irony. It's thick. Oh my god. He's right there. There he is. Got him. Oh my god. Got the second one. Oh my god, lost them both. They're still right here. There he is. Oh my goodness, you guys. What in the heck? Just lost three in a row on a single hook. Got him, got him. There we go. Oh my god, he's gone. <laughs> oh, this hurts. This hurts. This is painful. There we go. Got him. Oh my god, he's coming back for it though. Oh my God, I've hooked a fish every cast right here, you guys. Literally every cast. And none of them are sticking. Oh my goodness. That was pathetic. <laughs> Is this gonna be like the hardest part of the challenge? It's not the, not the building, not the hiking in or the building of the raft, it's the actually keeping a fish on the line. That's silly. We got this huge log, it's camouflage right now. And I got one, yes. Oh God, yes. Oh, God. Oh, oh, he's submarining me. Oh, he's submarining me. Oh. oh, gosh. There he is, though. We got him. We got him. I'm going to use the secondary 
log raft here so I can show you guys this beautiful trout I caught from the SS log jamming. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and we're not we're not gonna eat these things and I don't feel like packing them out, so. See you later, dude. Woohoo! There was a bunch of fish right there, so finally landed one. One for six. Not very good numbers, but you know what? We're having a good time anyways. How cool, mission accomplished, we did it. Well, we've abandoned ship. Not really, we just kind of got a bigger ship. It's pretty neat, we're literally out here floating on this giant old growth, prehistoric tree, catching trout. It's getting smoked out at this point. It's getting pretty gnarly, you guys. We're kind of getting a little worried. We kind of accomplished our goal, what we came to do. I know if it gets much smokier, it means that that fire is gonna like really just block out this canyon. It's gonna make this five mile hike just miserable. And I am worried about just closing the roads again, like I said. Um, but just to, just to think back on the idea of what we're doing right now, I'm literally standing on a giant tree, everyone, and it's moving. Really cool looking fish here, you guys. Second fish of the day. I'll hop on and walk in and show you. I think the colors are absolutely remarkable. Almost died. Almost died. But we're still alive. We're good. We're good. We're good. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. Here's a fish. Wow. Very neat. Super duper pretty. Crazy spot. So these are actually the genetics of these fish come from steelhead, I've been told. When this mountain erupted, there was actually steelhead in this creek that forms this lake. Uh, and when it blocked them off, the baby survived further upriver, but there was never any more option for steelhead to make it all the way back up here. So therefore, these are all genetics of little baby steelhead that have gotten big over the years. So pretty cool idea, pretty cool historical moment to finally get to touch one of these things. But I think it's time we get out of here. We've got a long ways to go, and that does not look good. Boat camp, it's been real. Until next time. Well, everyone, this week's excitement ends right where it all started off with an absolutely beautiful view. And I just wanna say, I'm so happy and thankful that you guys are along for this journey. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I definitely, definitely will be making this hike again sometime soon. But I wanna say thanks to all of you who are watching these videos. And again, if this is your first time watching a Stay Fishy video, thank you as well. And go back and watch some of the old ones because there's a lot of cool stuff we do just like this. So with all that being said, until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy, we'll see you out there.